I'm here at Mass Firearm School in Holliston, Massachusetts. They've been kind enough to let us use some of their guns and their facilities, so I'm just going to do a quick video showing some common concealed yeah, carry guns. It happens. It just happens. They just they can charge a lot of those things. Four charges $45. People ask me all the time which gun I carry and why. So here in front of me, I have two guns that I've carried at different points in my life, and gonna go over them and talk about things I like and dislike about each one. The first gun I carried I chose mostly based on an article I read. It's the Ruger LC9S and I read an article that highlighted all the great things about this gun and I liked that it was curvy. That was one of the things I remember from the article. It's curvy so it's easier to conceal and I thought that that was something that would be really important to me as I carried a gun. Concealment was probably the thing that I was most concerned about at the time. So when I came to try out different guns, I compared this Ruger LC9S to the MNP9 Shield. I chose the LC9S that day because I like the melted look. It's not as boxy as the shield, so I thought that it would conceal better and that was a big concern for me. And when I tried them out, I liked the trigger on the Ruger more than the shield. I didn't know that you could put aftermarket triggers on your gun, so that's why I ended up choosing the Ruger. As I started to shoot the gun and train with it and take classes with it, I started to learn some things about the gun that I didn't like. For instance, when I go to eject the magazine, it's really difficult. If I press the magazine release, it doesn't just pop out. I have to use my other hand to get the magazine out. On the shield, when I press the magazine release, the magazine just pops right out. In one of my classes, I learned that you're supposed to have a straight line from the front sight to the rear sight, to your elbow, all the way up to your shoulder. So it should look like this. But as you can see, when I adjust my wrist for there to be a straight line, I can't really reach the trigger. So when I first got the gun and I was shooting, I would change my grip so that I could reach the trigger properly, but that meant that there wasn't a straight line. So I realized that the gun wasn't fitting my hand naturally. So when you go to buy a gun, you wanna make sure you have a straight line and just make sure that your finger can actually reach the trigger properly with that grip. On this gun, as you can see, I can't really reach it. On the shield, if I hold it the same way with a straight line, the grip is much different and I can reach the trigger properly. One of the classes I took as I continued training with my gun was a one-hand operation class. And in that class, we had to load, reload, clear malfunctions, do everything with one hand. And in that class, I discovered that the rear sight on this gun does not make that easy because it's a sloping sight, as you can see, and it doesn't have a clear angle here. So if I show you the sight on the shield, it's a much more dramatic angle. So this allows you to work the slide off your holster or your belt and it makes one-handed operation a lot easier. Also in that class, we had to remove the magazine with one hand and on this gun, if I press the magazine release, the magazine is going to come on its own. As opposed to the shield, when I press the magazine release on the shield, it just flies right out. Another thing that became clear to me the more I shot the Ruger LC9S was that it didn't have a trigger reset, which is the distance that the trigger has to travel before you can fire another shot. So I'll show you here on the Ruger LC9S. I pull the trigger and it goes bang. Now for me to be able to shoot again, my finger has to travel all the way out before I can shoot again. Now on the shield, if I do the same thing, I pull the trigger, I fire my shot, and then that's all it has to travel before I can fire my shot again. When you start taking defensive shooting classes, you're going to realize how important trigger reset is because your finger is going to take twice as long to pull the trigger again, so your shots are going to be a lot slower. So I've been carrying the shield now for about two years. I'm very happy with it. It's really comfortable for me to shoot. 
Uh, I did not enjoy shooting the LC9S much. I thought I did at the beginning until I did an accurate comparison with a shield with a good trigger in it. Um, so I really like this gun and I don't think I'm going to change it anytime soon. It's really reliable and I haven't had any issues with it. So now I'm going to go over some other popular guns that I know people carry or people ask me about carrying. And we're going to start with the Glock 43. Personally, I don't like the way Glocks feel in my hands, but I know that a lot of people like them and a lot of people find them comfortable. So if you're going to carry a Glock, this is a great choice for you because of the size. It's about the same size as the shield. It's a single stack 9mm, which is a good size for me personally because I can conceal it well and I can still shoot it well. It's not too snappy with the recoil. I could shoot it all night long in a class and my hand's not going to hurt. So something this size is a good option. Next I'm going to talk about the SIG 938. This is a really popular gun. I see it in a lot of classes. It's small so it's easy to conceal. But the problem with this gun is that I've seen it malfunction every time it's in a class. Another thing I don't like about it is the safety. So I'll show you. The safety is right here. And when I go to disengage the safety, it pinches my other finger on the other side. So that's something that I would find uncomfortable if I were shooting this in a class over and over again. It kept pinching my finger. I just don't like the safety on this gun, and I don't like how much I've seen it malfunction. So concealability is great with this gun, but the reliability is questionable. So here we have the single stack 9mm that I've talked about. I like a 9mm because I wouldn't feel comfortable going below that in caliber. They're pretty easy to conceal because of their size, and they're still usually very comfortable to shoot. So when you hear the term single stack, it just means that the ammunition fits in one single stack in the magazine. So the magazines are usually thinner, and so are the guns. So now I'm going to talk about the Glock 19. This is one of the most popular Glocks out there, so you'll see these around a lot. It's a little bigger than the Glock 43 that I showed you before. It's still a 9mm, but it has a double stack magazine, so it's wider. And the gun is just overall a little larger, and for my body, it's a little more difficult to conceal. But my sister carries one of these and she conceals it just fine. So it depends on your body type and this might be a little more comfortable to shoot than the Glock 43 because it's a little bigger so it's going to handle the recoil better. If you're looking for a 380, this is the M&P 380 Shield EZ. This is fairly new but there are some features that I really like on this gun. For example, the slide is really easy to manipulate so if you have difficulty with hand strength, that could be a big plus for you. It's really easy to pull the slide back on this gun. Another thing that you might like about this gun is that it has a grip safety here, so you can't pull the trigger unless you have your grip disengaging the safety on the back of the gun. The magazine on this gun also makes loading a little easier because it has these tabs on the side that allow you to pull down the spring as you load it, so it makes it easier to load the magazine. So if you have issues loading magazines, that could be something you look for as well when you're looking for a carry gun. Let's talk about some revolvers because I know that a lot of women carry them and try them out when they want to find a concealed carry gun. Usually they look for them because they're small so it's going to be easier to conceal. But one thing that I don't like about these guns is how uncomfortable I find they are to shoot because the barrel is so short and there's a lot of recoil, so shooting one of these in a class where I'm going to be shooting 150 plus rounds can get really uncomfortable, which for me would make me not want to train with it as often as I should. If you do enjoy shooting a revolver like this, I would recommend finding one that does not have an exposed hammer like this does, because this could get snagged on your clothing. So finding something like this without an exposed hammer might be a better way to go if you're going to be concealed carrying. These also hold fewer rounds than a semi-automatic. These both hold five rounds. And for me personally, the reloads are a lot slower. If you do like revolvers and you enjoy shooting these and decide to carry one, you can get really fast with your reload. You just have to make sure you practice consistently. 
one-handed operation with a revolver is also really difficult and because in real life your hand might get injured, that's something you need to think about. I've known a lot of women to be steered in the direction of a revolver because of how simple and easy they are to use. But if you're willing to put in the time and training, I personally feel that a semi-automatic is a better choice. If you're in the market for a concealed carry gun, I recommend going and trying as many as you can. Try not to let other people's ideas and opinions influence your choices. Even if you read it in a magazine or hear it from someone at the gun shop, make sure you're finding something that's comfortable for you because if it's not comfortable, you're not gonna train with it.